If you're dealing with shoulder impingement, then you need to know the top five things that we do here in the clinic to make sure that people get out of shoulder impingement and get better. And stick around for the whole video because number five is just as important as number one. Let's get into it. A quick recap on the shoulder, shoulder blade in the anatomy. This is sitting right here. The only bony attachment is right here in front of my shoulder, in front of my chest and my rib cage right here. We need space right here. This is where it gets impinged. We need space right there. So I wore cutoffs so that you could see that my shoulder blade glides out to the side. And so when my shoulder blade comes out like this, that creates space for, for my glenohumeral joint so it doesn't pinch right here. Everything we're gonna be focused on is the relationship between the shoulder blade, the glenohumeral joint, and the rib cage. We need thoracic mobility. Right from the get-go, we have to have a pathway for the shoulder blade to go into so that it could create space right here. So we have to be able to dig into this spot. So we're gonna go after that first, is how do we gain thoracic mobility so that as the shoulder blade goes back, we have space right here. And then we're gonna talk about how to stabilize it. You're probably wondering why I have all these cool tools right here, okay? So this is a MOBO. We'll have a link in the description so that you can check these out. But it does a lot of things. Uh, it's a great tool for the things that we're trying to do, increasing mobility and getting more motion. I also have this, this foam for a pool, a pool noodle. So we could use something like this too to increase thoracic mobility. The double lacrosse balls, easy, quick and easy. You can find these as well on Amazon. But if we're starting out right in the beginning, what I'm going to do is use a towel roll. So a towel roll right th like this, we're going to be pressing into the rib cage right here so that my I'm having pressure, it pushes my thoracic spine up, and then I'm breathing and relaxing. I want to sink down, have my rib cage, my shoulder blade sink down into it. So if you're going to do this on the ground, that's best. But if you need to do it on your bed, I put this yoga mat right here so that I can get some stiffness on my bed. So find something at home that can create stiffness if you're doing it on the bed because we want to sink down over whatever we're using, whatever tool. We don't want our back sinking into it and curling us up. So I'm going to lay down to the side, roll back, and it's going to be underneath my shoulder blades right here. And I'm going to keep my knees bent and I chin tuck. Now I'm breathing and relaxing. If this is my shoulder blade, then I want to be just below the shoulder blade, at the bottom of the shoulder blade, and then about mid shoulder blade. I'm going to do three different spots and I'm going to do about 10 breaths in each spot. I'm just allowing myself to glide down into it. Now, if you don't feel this towel roll, that's okay. We use something like this, especially on the bed. This is really intense. It's for smaller people. It's really intense on the floor. This is what I use on the floor. You will work our way up to that. That's a progression. But what we want to do if we're on the bed is get a double of cross balls or something like this set up and I'll lay it down like this. I'm going to lay back and this is going to give me good pressure right here. And if your back starts popping, then we know it's working. I'm chin tuck, keep my knees bent right here. If I straighten my legs out, then my, my pelvis rolls forward and it takes some pressure off these double lacrosse balls. So I keep my knees bent, I chin tuck, I can have my hands like this, I can have my hands out to the side. The only position I don't want them in is palms down because watch my shoulder, when my palm goes down, it starts to roll forward. So it's tilting, it's anterior tipping, and so I'm not getting as much pressure and it's, it's negative for the shoulder position. We don't want to go into too much internal rotation like this. That's closing that subacromial space. We want to be in more external rotation while we're rehabbing it and we're getting out of pain. Now exercise number two, I wanna work on the outside of my shoulder blade right here where the rotator cuff muscles come in, they connect. It'll get, the muscles will get really tight in between the, the glenohumeral joint, my humerus, and my shoulder blade. And so I wanna loosen this up. If it's really tight and hunkered down, it's gonna cause some, com some compression. It's gonna cause some compression, some irritation in that joint. So I wanna loosen that up and get some of that pull off of the rotator cuff muscles. So what I'm gonna do, we call it the Hollywood. So I'm gonna lay down right here, putting this off to the side, and then I come here, and you can see here's my Hollywood pose like this. So almost like a swimsuit model. So I'm laying down and I'm digging into that muscle tissue. You should be able to find some tender spots right there. And so doing it on the floor is best, but if we can't get on the floor, I'm not getting enough pressure right there. So what I'm gonna do is flip this over and make, make it have more tension. I put this down. 
and I'm going in between those shoulder blades. I'm going outside the shoulder blade and then I'm laying my head down and I'm just letting it dig into tender spots. I wanna do this for about a minute. I find three different spots and I'm 20 seconds in each spot and I'm loosening that up so I can decrease that pull on my rotator cuff and I'm opening up that tissue. We find that our clients tell us that that one of the exercise tends to be really tender. So take it easy on yourself. We wanna do these exercises routine twice a day. It's not about killing yourself and making it extremely painful. Exercise number three is gonna be Batmans. So what we wanna do is get our shoulder blades in this position. We wanna externally rotate, create space right here in my pecs, make that shoulder blade sit down and back. And so I'm driving down and back with it. So we call these Batmans. I come right here, I stay flat and neutral. And now I do a chin tuck right there. And then I'm gonna bring my arms out to the side. Now watch if I bring my elbow past my rib cage, how my shoulder blade starts to tilt forward again. So that's not a positive motion. My arm is leading the motion and my shoulder blade's not. I want my shoulder blade to lead this motion. It's very important that we're leading with the shoulder blades and we're using that lower trap to get more stabilization. So I'm gonna pin my shoulder blades down and back, do my chin tuck and maintain this position. I'm holding it for 30 seconds. My elbows are down below my rib cage and I'm leading with my shoulder blade. I'm gonna do two sets of that, chin tucking, belly tucked, and then pulling my shoulder blades down and back. And we're doing that consistently. Exercise number four, we call it no monies. It's like, I don't have any money, bro. I'm doing this. So I'm pinning my shoulder blades down and back. So if you watch from the front, I can add a band, but in the beginning, it's not important to have a band. We would go really light as well. So I'm pulling my shoulder blades down and back, maintaining that chin tuck, maintaining my belly tuck, and I'm trying to move through my rib cage. If I'm looking through the side, I want my elbow right here against my rib cage. I'm pulling my shoulder blades down and back and maintaining this chin tuck. When I hold the band, I'm gonna do this as a 30 second hold. In the beginning with our exercises, we wanna act activate muscles. If this is my entire muscle, these fibers fire really well and these ones don't. So when I do a sustained hold in the first two weeks, I'm getting more motor activation. My, when these fatigue out, my brain will recruit these fibers. So I get, if I get more muscle fibers fired up in the beginning, we've found here at the clinic, it works much better when we get into a strengthening program. So we're going to do sustained holds with these two exercises, the Batmans and the No Monies. I'm going to pin my shoulder blades down and back, maintaining my chin tuck, and I'm holding this for 30 30 seconds. I'm going to do two sets of that one. Now this is a great exercise for when you're at a stoplight, when you're in the car, we're pinning those shoulder blades down and back, palms up, and we're maintaining this position and we're holding it. We can do it any time of day, but that's reinforcing good movement patterns for the shoulder blade and creating the space that we're looking for that's going to get us out of this shoulder impingement problem. Exercise number five is threading the needle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get on the bed, I'm gonna get on the floor, and I'm coming out to the side. So I sit on my heels as best I can. I'm gonna come out to the side, drop my head down. I put my hand on top of my heel, my hand right here, drop my head down, and I just breathe right here. I'm gonna take five breaths right here. sinking down into it a little bit more each time. And then I'm gonna come the other way, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm doing five breaths with that, resting my head on my arm, and I'm doing that on both sides for five breaths. So I'm loosening up that muscle tissue that I'm working, and when we do that, we're gonna get more length in it, and we can get more of those muscle fibers activated. So we'll do this in sequence, that we increase mobility, and then we spark up the right muscles, and then we lengthen the muscles. Now we talked about five of the top exercises we should be doing, but we have a bonus exercise right here. The big thing to know is that we do not start this in the clinic until two weeks out. And the reason why, if my shoulders are rolled forward right here, then this serratus muscle, this ribby muscle right here that pulls my shoulder blade up against the rib cage, it's already short. So I've got to create some length in it. So I need to pull that shoulder blade back. And if I do that for two weeks consistently, I'm creating more length in that muscle and then I can activate it better. And that's the muscle that pulls me up against the rib cage when my shoulder blade comes up. It's the holy grail muscle. So we're going to talk about how to activate that. This one's a little bit tricky too. So remember, wait two weeks for this one, but I'm going to be on my knees right here in a modified push up position. I'm coming down almost in a plank and I'm pushing my elbow down and I'm pushing my chest away. My shoulder blade is 
pushing against the rib cage tighter, I'm holding this for 30 seconds. One of the things, one of the tricks that we do in the clinic is that we tell people every five seconds of that 30 seconds, so six times in 30 seconds, I'm gonna push up a little bit more right there. And I push up a little bit more. And I push up a little bit more. So I'm doing that every five seconds so I can get more activation out of that serratus anterior muscle. This, remember, that's the holy grail, but we don't want to start that until two weeks out. Once we get that fired up, we're going to be off to the races. So we're going to sequence properly of doing those exercises. Go back through the routine and make sure that you're doing these exercises right and ask us any questions that you have about that because this is a sequence that we do and we have success with almost every one of the shoulder clients that we have. 99% of them have shoulder impingement. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and you hit that bell icon. You don't wanna miss out on the exercise that we have coming up, the fixes that we have. It's all with success that we have here in the clinic. If you missed the last video that we posted on shoulder impingement, it's really diving deep into the anatomy and what we wanna avoid. So make sure you check it out above right here. Get mobile and stay active.